oh my God, what are you doing here? I was sleeping. Oh, oh, oh. yeah, I know. I, I, I told you I'd tell you about my story in Hollywood. How I went from a rising star to a Nevada sex worker. Where to begin? Well, I guess you could say I started out not exactly innocent. I mean, I was doing photo shoots, nude photo shoots, and yeah, so I just wanted to be a model, and it was really hard because, you know, I'm not six foot and 100 pounds. So, as far as fashion model go, and as far as a print model, um, I always, they always told me I was too commercial, whatever that meant. Um, but acting is probably just a tad easier. Not really, but it is. But it ain't, but it is. I don't know. Anyway. I first got an extra agent and I was doing extra work and I picked up some books at French's bookstore and a paper called The Drama Log. And um, oh, in the meantime, I was always looking for agents, so I thought that would help. And a lot of agencies, even though they'll sign you, they don't really get you out on auditions. However, I did actually get a break on that because after about two or three agents I got a really good one meaning that he sent me out pretty much all the time on auditions it was almost to a point where I couldn't even take all the calls it was just too many auditions and um, so I was just looking in the drama log and there were every month there were always new more and more auditions, new auditions for these, you know, low budget films, um, you know, di different low budget films and movies. So um, I'd always go on any audition that that I fit for on the parts they were looking for, and um, quite a few I got, different small parts, and. Um, it w it's just hard work, okay? And a lot of times I'd be on the set from like early, early morning till really, really late to a point where I was just so tired and just falling asleep there. And it, w it was really boring. Like you would just be sitting on a set and watching the actors repeat the same lines over and over and over. And you're just thinking, this is going to go on all day. And a lot of times it would. And a lot of times the sets were like outside on location and it was cold. Um, it just depends on the environment and that they were shooting in. And um, so after about, I'd say maybe five, six years of all, doing all that, I finally started to get my breaks. And I was getting better and better offers. And finally, my agent told me I was invited to a casting party. But I have really bad social anxiety. It's like I become a tree when I'm around a lot more than just a few people. I become like this tree and I just like will just like stare off into space and just not know how, how I don't know how to talk around more than one or two people. I really don't. It, it gets, I get lots of anxiety and, and I don't like it. I just zone out. So I decided that I couldn't do that. And that was like a, a probably a huge mistake because I mean, I was invited to a, a party where there were going to be producers, directors, actors, and it was, you know, a party for a film, and I probably could have got a really good part. 
Um, and then I was getting invited out to different clubs to mingle with the stars. But, you know, again, I have social anxiety. And I just didn't want to do that. I, it's not me. I don't want that lifestyle. I don't want... I decided, you know, it just wasn't for me. The lifestyle wasn't for me. I, didn't, I don't want to be out at all hours of the morning drinking and talking with people. And But I know that's what you have to do, really. It's really, it's who you know in the business more than anything. Even though I was taking acting classes, doing theater, all this stuff, it's still, you still have to go out and mingle with people and party and stuff, really. Unless you're, like, really lucky and you have relatives or something that can help you. But anyway, at that point, I just decided, you know, I might as well just go work in a brothel. I, mean, I can make good money there. And um, probably wouldn't be as hard. Um, so yeah, I just one day got in my car and drove out to Nevada and got hired there on the spot. So started working at this one place and it was really hard because you were on call. They didn't have chefs. They were just like, 24 hours on call and it was a brutal brutal place because the owner was very very mean I mean you could probably make like double of any other brothel which I usually made about as much as a doctor would but there you could just make like quadrillions like just because you're always like working like you never got to sleep and I got really bad sleep deprivation and then plus um they used to put stuff in your food to, to keep you up. And once they did that to me, I decided I wanted to get out of there. And um, I didn't eat for like 24 hours because I knew that if I ate any of their food, I'd, I would be drugged again. And um, so I didn't eat for like 24 hours just to get sober enough so I could get out of there. And I was scared for my life. And <clears throat> I don't know if the same owner still owns that. It's called the Cherry Patch, but um, he, he was brutal, and I wouldn't be surprised if there are quite a few uh, bodies out there in the desert, because, I mean, just think, you can't do that to people. You can't just keep putting drugs in their food. You know, what if I was allergic? You know, I could have easily overdosed. I'm not a druggie, okay? I had no idea that place was like that. So then I, I went to work for another place that was better, and um, they didn't do that, and um I, I actually could actually choose to sleep if I wanted to. They wouldn't wake you up. Um, well, unless you didn't make any money that day, but that's another story. I always made money, so it wasn't a, it wasn't a problem. That was pretty good. But still, you're out in the middle of the desert, right? And not, not too good. But anyway, and then after that, I went to another place called the Mustang, and that was the best. I stayed there for like three years. It was the best place. Um... And yeah, I just saved up my money and bought some properties. So, but unfortunately, the economies took a downturn and I just want to grow my own food and have permaculture and have like a little, um, like a paradise retreat. And I'd like just to find somebody, maybe even a couple, to just help me because it's it, this is hard work, okay? I mean, I would ra I would rather probably just go back and work in another brothel, but I don't want to be out in the middle of a desert, and I don't want to be stuck eating, you know, garbage like factory farm food. I can't I cannot eat factory farm food. It it gives me chest pains and nightmares. I mean, I'm not even kidding you. It's not good. You have to eat wild food, you know, grass fed food, wild food, um, food that's been raised, you know, in a nice way without antibiotics or, um, you don't know what they do to the stuff when they process it. Anyway, that's my story. I'm going back to bed. Take care.